Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. So uh, I hope you can hear my voice at the back. I'm going to try to talk as loud as I can. So today I want to talk about DPOS and the role of block producers in the EOS ecosystem. Uh, my name is Tudukaka and before I start, I want to talk about the purpose of this meetup. The purpose of this meetup is to educate ourselves. Now, just imagine if you were in the number of those people that got to know about Steam when Steam was created. The first time that Steam was created, Steam was created for work and you can actually mine Steam with your computer. So it was actually very easy to get Steam, you know? And now EOS is coming. When I started looking into EOS, I was very, very, what's the word? Enthused because of the promises and because of what they plan to do. And I wanted to make sure that I get in any and understand the ecosystem before they start. Because when I understand the ecosystem, I will know how to position myself in order to exploit opportunities. And by exploit opportunities, I don't mean going and start you know, sucking the system. I'll know, okay, these are the skills that I need to possess in order to you know, benefit. Because technologies like this, they come with a lot of benefits and they bring prosperity to a lot of people. But somebody said that technology does not bring prosperity, it is people that actually bring prosperity using technology. And that is the essence of this meetup today, to actually learn so that we can know where to position ourselves and what to do in order to benefit from this entire ecosystem. So, I'd like to thank EOS Nation. Uh, they donated 20 EOS to the organization of this event. And EOS Cafe donated 20 steam to the organization of this event. And every other money was donated by members of the EOS Nigerian Committee community, the EOS Nigerian community. Now, do we have an EOS Nigerian community? Yes. If you are here, you are already part of the community. Now, somebody donated 20,000 Naira. I, I think Moriko, can you just stand up so that we just give me a round of applause? <laughs> People donated to make sure that this event is a reality. And I, I, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you to understand that we are a community already. So, the people who are going to shine are the people who are going to actually take up responsibilities. So, we have a WhatsApp group already. There is no boss. There, doesn't, there shouldn't be an EOS nation. I just saw this thing and I applied. You know, and I'm repeating because maybe I talk very well. What I'm trying to say is that you too can be uh, part of this community, not just a part of it, but the pe part of the people that are actually making things happen. Alright? EOS right now does not have a platform that we can use. Alright? We are all here because we believe in this idea, because we've seen what, what, we can, what can happen with Steam. And EOS is going to create a platform where we can build applications like Steam. What's the big thing about applications like Steam. The, the major difference between Steam and Facebook is that in Steam, everybody gets to be a part of the shareholders. Everybody can own stake in the platform, so everybody has shared interest. The, the whole idea of decentralized autonomous applications is that everybody gets to be part of the profit sharing and the money does not just go to a central entity. Okay, so introduction to DPoS and the role of block producers in the EOS ecosystem. Now, I'm going to talk about proof of work, proof of stake, and delegated proof of stake. I'm going to talk about the benefits of DPoS and the role of block producers and some really cool VPs to look out for. Talking about proof of work, proof of stake, and delegated proof of stake. Now, in a decentralized system, Steam, applications like Steam are decentralized system. In a decentralized system, there's no central government. There's no central authority. There's no central server. The servers are distributed. Another name for server is node. The nodes are distributed. 
And in order for the nodes to run su um, successfully, there needs to be a way for the nodes to come to an agreement. If I send you one steam, for example, that <laughs> transaction that I sent you one steam needs to be added to the blockchain. How are you going to be added to the blockchain when the record is not on the central server? When the record is distributed to different people in different parts of the world? Consensus. How do you make sure that individual parties from opposite sides of the world come, come to consensus without a third party? And that is the whole idea of proof of work, proof of stake, and delegated proof of stake. Proof of work is the very first type of consensus uh, that was used by Bitcoin. And basically, the transactions, like, the, like, like I said, I sent in once in that transaction. You like my post, that is the transaction. The transactions are put together in blocks, and then the miners, you have individuals in the Bitcoin ecosystem called miners. They verify the, trans the transactions, and say, okay, this transaction is a legitimate transaction that, okay, the money actually left my account and went to your account. And then they include the transaction in the blockchain. But before they can include the transaction in the blockchain, they have to solve a mathematical problem that is very difficult. And then, once they solve the mathematical problem, they are rewarded with one Bitcoin, in case of Bitcoin, that's the first person to successfully solve the transaction. And then the verified transaction we put in the blockchain. So every node is going to record on their blockchain that, like, okay, uh, Tushitaka has sent one Bitcoin to his friend. Now this was the very first uh, consensus method, but it was it's actually good. It's actually good, but it consumes a lot of electricity. I know that a lot of you may not understand, but this is just a brief summary and over simplified explanation. But uh, this kind of consensus mechanism had a problem. The problem was that it consumes a lot of electricity because the miners that actually secure the network and add transactions to block, they had to compete with their computational power. In 2008, when Bitcoin started, you could be a miner. If you have a PC, you can just you know, mine Bitcoins. That means you are part of the people validating the transactions. You are part of the people securing the network. But now, you have big mining farms, and you have mining pools. You have about four mining pools in Bitcoin. And so, so, it consumes a lot of electricity. Somebody said that by the year 2020, um, Somebody said that uh, the amount of energy it takes to run the Bitcoin network is enough to power the Denmark, a whole country right now. So Bitcoin mining con consumes a lot of electricity and it's not environmentally friendly. And then we have another consensus mechanism that's called proof of stake. And in proof of stake, all you need to do to validate blocks is to own a stake in the platform. So if you own a stake, a stake in the platform, the more your stake, the more you are able to mine, the more the probability of you producing a block. But this one also had a problem, which is that uh, some people have more stake than others and therefore produce more blocks than others. And then the new consensus me mechanism method I want to talk about today is delegated proof of stake. In delegated proof of stake, which is the method that is used in decentralized applications like BitShares, Steam, and EOS. We elect our block producers. Now, what is the function of a block producer or, or a weakness? The function of weakness is to produce blocks, secure the network, and so forth. Instead of us having miners that will consume a lot of electricity, competing to produce blocks, we elect them with our, let me just read this, uh, it says, delegated proof of stake is the fastest, most efficient, most decentralized, and most flexible consensus model available. It leverages the power of stakeholder approval voting to resolve consensus issues in a fair and democratic way. So basically what, what it means is that we are going to elect people that are going to be producing the blocks for us. Instead of those people producing block, 
mining or you know we are going to elect them so and it has some benefits it is faster there are no fees uh, there's a sort of LD competition now in the EOS ecosystem the block producers are going to be competing for your votes because you need to vote them in in order for them to be able to produce blocks when they produce blocks they get paid so we have 21 block producers that are going to be paid to secure the network to host a, a copy of the blockchain you know and those 24 21 block producers they're going to be paid and they are going to be competing for your for your attention for your votes and they compete by producing value to the network and this is one advantage of delegated proof of stake instead of miners wasting a lot of electricity we have a situation whereby the money for mining for that electricity can actually be channeled to producing value in the network and then it promotes decentralization because now we have 21 block producers and not just four mining pools now and one advantage of Depots is that it brings power back to people because it's a, some, it's a sort of representative democracy. Now, just imagine that you have a weakness that is producing block and is producing value to the network, and the weakness starts misbehaving. What do we do? Vote him out. We vote him out, just remove your vote, and then. So there's an incentive for people to be good, and this is one thing I like about uh, centralized app that run on this sort of consensus. There's an incentive to be good. Because if you are not good, you get voted out. Now, in the in the EOS ecosystem, there's going to be a representation system. Okay, we're still going to talk about that. Now, what is a block producer? A block producer is simply someone who produces block. Because I said that in the beginning of this presentation, that we the EOS ecosystem is a decentralized system, and we need people to actually add transactions to our blockchain. The role of the block producers is to produce blocks, secure the network, and add value to the network. Now, examples of block producers, we have EOS Cafe. EOS Cafe has its own value proposition. They have something they are bringing to the network. They are not just going to be hosting the network on their servers, but they are going to bring in value so that you can vote for them. And their value proposition is that they are going to be hosting physical, they are going to be having physical spaces in all over the world where uh, people can come and build apps. I'm going to play a video where uh, the founder of EOS Cafe is going to talk more about EOS Cafe. And then we have EOS Nation and their block and their value proposition is you know, they add value to the network by providing educational materials and creating awareness. Owner is another block producer this owner is a social media website that is, is going to be on the EOS ecosystem. Now, a lot of the applications that are going to be on the EOS ecosystem are already running functionally. Now, like this owner now is already running in China, but when the EOS blockchain is launched in June 1st, they are going to move to the EOS blockchain. And very soon, owner is going to be in Nigeria. So Ono is basically a social media blogging site, just like Steaming, but they have different value proposition and different um, modus operandi. So that's basically all for me. If you have any question, please ask.